Hello guys, welcome to GMAT Point. In this video, we'll be discussing about the toughness or the difficulty level of the GMAT exam. So we'll try to discuss and address one of the most frequently asked questions by a lot of GMAT aspirants. That is, is the GMAT exam really tough? As we all know, the GMAT or the Graduate Management Admission Test is a very widely known MBA entrance exam and it's taken by a lot of MBA aspirants globally. The GMAT is a test that is known to assess your analytical and critical thinking abilities and it is a computer adaptive test and every management aspirant hopes to achieve a high GMAT score that will allow him or her to apply to the top B schools in India or abroad. So now the question that is asked by a lot of aspirants is that is the GMAT exam really tough? We can say that the GMAT is not a very tough exam but it's surely a challenging exam. That's because it requires proper planning and preparation and a good amount of practice. But if you make sure these things are taken care of well, cracking the GMAT is not a very tough job. So in this video, we'll try and decode if the GMAT exam is really tough and if it is tough, what makes it tough? So we'll look at all those factors and also provide you some tips which will help you crack the GMAT exam. Firstly, if you're someone who's planning to take the GMAT, you can kickstart your preparation with GMAT Point. Let me quickly run you through the excellent resources that we are offering at GMAT Point, which are completely free. You can take this five topic tests each on Quant and Verbal on our website. Apart from that, we are providing free GMAT daily tests. So these tests are provided every day and these are curated to match the difficulty level of the exam. And we provide these tests on various topics and these are completely free. So taking these tests every day will help you strengthen your fundamentals. So if you are a serious GMAT aspirant, you should definitely take these tests because these are highly recommended. And as mentioned, these include various topics. For example, if it's quant, these include topics which are a good mix of problem solving questions and also data sufficiency questions. Also, when it comes to preparation for exams such as the GMAT, peer group is very important. So having a peer group is one of the uh, very important factors while preparing for the GMAT. And we have a dedicated telegram group for all the GMAT aspirants. The link for the telegram group is provided below in the description box. So do check it out and you can join the telegram group wherein you can post and discuss your queries with your peers and also exam experts. Apart from that, if you have any other queries regarding the GMAT exam, do reach out to us at support at the rate gmatpoint.com. You can also WhatsApp or call us on this number 6303239042. Alright, now let us look at the GMAT exam pattern and we'll also discuss about the difficulty level of these sections. We have the quantitative reasoning and the verbal reasoning section, the integrated reasoning and the AWA that is the analytical writing assessment section. Your overall GMAT score which ranges between 200 and 800 includes your scores only in the quant and the verbal reasoning sections. The quant section has a total of 31 questions and the total time available is 62 minutes. For the verbal reasoning section, the time, uh, the number of questions is 36 and the time available is 65 minutes. Integrated reasoning section with 12 questions, 30 minutes. The AWA section with uh, one question and 30 minutes. Also during the exam, you cannot skip any question or you cannot go back to any question. And as mentioned, your final score includes your performance in uh, only these two sections. The quant section majorly tests your ability in arithmetic, algebra, geometry, probability and so on. So these are the major topics that are tested. And similarly, when we look at the verbal reasoning section, the major topics tested are the critical reasoning section, sentence correction and the reading comprehension. For better insights on the syllabus of the GMAT exam, for a detailed analysis of the syllabus and also all the subtopics, all the important topics, uh, do check out our video on GMAT syllabus and how to prepare uh, for the GMAT exam. So the link for the video is provided in the description box below. So do check it out. Now let us quickly look at this table which uh, mentions the GMAT scores versus their percentiles. So these numbers are the percentiles against these scores. Again, these percentile uh, data may vary slightly. These are uh, based on the pool of candidates that take the exam. And uh, usually a 700 score uh, is around 88 percentile. And as mentioned earlier, the maximum GMAT score is 800. And when somebody asks the question, how hard is the GMAT or how tough is it? What they really want to know is how hard is it to crack the GMAT exam and get a high enough score, which will uh, help them clear the cutoff and also set them apart from the crowd. And from and also from this table, which we can see here clearly, a score of 700 is usually in the 88 percentile range. So getting something around 88 percentile is not very hard if you can plan your preparation well and prepare accordingly. So what makes the GMAT tough? This is one of the most frequently asked questions by a lot of GMAT aspirants. And we have 
come up with three major factors, three broad factors that can make the GMAT a challenging exam. As mentioned earlier, GMAT is not a very tough exam, but there are some factors that uh, make it quite challenging and these are some of those major factors. So one factor is the time factor, the strategy and the accuracy. Let's look at these factors one by one. So firstly, the timing. The GMAT is a long exam and there's no doubt about this fact. It is a roughly three hour plus exam and you need to stay focused during the entire duration of this exam. So while preparing for the exam and also while taking the mock tests, you need to be aware of the number of questions to attempt within the given time limit. Because if you spend too much time uh, here and there or get carried away by a particular question, you will not be able to attempt all the questions within the given time frame. There are 31 questions in the quant section and 36 questions in the verbal section. And both these sections have around 60 minutes. So this is 62 minutes to be exact and this is 65 minutes. So within this time frame, you need to be able to attempt these questions. So you cannot spend too much time on a question. Let's say you're uh, attempting the quant section and you are not able to solve a problem. So you should not get stuck in that problem. Don't spend an unreasonable amount of time. After you've spent some time and if you're still not able to figure out, you need to mark something, you need to mark some option and you need to move on. Especially after having spent some time, you will be able to eliminate uh, one or two options. So in the remaining options, you need to guess mark an option and you need to move on to the next question. Similarly with the verbal section as well, as mentioned, there are the three major subtopics, the critical reasoning, sentence correction and reading comprehension. Let's say you're solving a sentence correction question and you're able to eliminate three options. So you'll be left with only two options. If you are still not able to figure out, you should not be spending too much time on it. So you have narrowed it down to two options, which is actually very good. So you have 50 50 chances of getting it right or wrong. So you need to choose an option quickly and move on to the next question because there will be more other questions which you will be able to attempt. So spending time on one question or some specific type of questions for too long is definitely not a good strategy. You need to take into this time factor into account. If you are not able to manage this time well in the GMAT, uh, this is when you find the exam to be tough. So clearly timing is one of the most crucial aspects to consider if you want to crack the GMAT. And the only solution for this is to practice a lot. Practice a lot of questions that will help you improve your speed and also take more mocks that will improve your test taking strategy. All right, the next important factor is the strategy. These are the four sections in the exam and each and every subtopic in each of these sections. Uh, let's look at the quant section for instance. We have uh, in the quant section, we have the problem solving and the data sufficiency. So these are the two types of questions that appear in the exam under the quant section. And each of these different kind of topics require a different approach. So practicing enough number of problems and also tackling these type of questions accordingly will help you crack this section. So the quant section is not only just about assessing your math skills, but also how you approach any given type of problem. And each of these uh, two categories of questions are unique and they need a different approach to solve. Similarly, in the verbal section, there are three sections as mentioned critical reasoning. So these are the three sections, sentence correction, reading comprehension, and the critical reasoning. And each of these require a different approach to solve these questions. So during your practice and also during your mocks, you need to analyze carefully. You need to analyze your mocks very thoroughly. And you must be very clear about your strengths and weaknesses. So you need to have a very clear understanding of your own strengths and weaknesses. That's because your strategy should be in such a way that, uh, for example, there's a topic of your strength. And when you come across that question, which is of your strength, you need to quickly solve it. You should not be spending more time on your areas of strength so that you can spend enough time on your weaknesses. That is the questions uh, which are weak at. For example, if sentence correction is your strength, you should not be spending more than two minutes on these questions at any cost. You should be spending less than two minutes or on an average one and a half minute per SC question. And that time that is saved here can be better spent on CR or RC questions. Similarly, in the quantitative section, if problem solving is the strength, you should be able to solve these questions very quickly so that you would have enough time to spend on the data sufficiency questions. And also remember that uh, GMAT is a computer adaptive test. So you cannot skip any question or you cannot go back to previous question. And hence you should be able to solve your strengths, areas of strengths quickly so that you would have uh, relatively more time uh, to spend on the questions of your weak areas. And when it comes to the integrated reasoning section, again, here also the practice is the key. Here there are basically four uh, different types of questions that are asked. 
first you need to have a basic understanding of these type of questions and you need to take mocks and after you've taken the mock you can go back and analyze these questions to have an understanding of how to solve these questions similarly in the analytical writing assessment section you will be given a topic or a paragraph about an issue and you need to present your arguments about that issue again here also during your mock analysis uh, look at the problem look at the way in which you can analyze the issue and present your arguments that can help you improve your awa section but again as your final gmat score includes your performance uh, only in these two sections you need to strategize accordingly as mentioned you need to follow all these things that were mentioned that were just discussed so have a clear understanding of your strengths and weaknesses practice more and take more mock tests and plan your strategy accordingly all right one other important point to remember as a part of your strategy is choosing the best order to attempt the test earlier a uh, few years back the test takers didn't have the option of rearranging this order uh, but later the option to choose among uh, the these following orders have been given to the aspirants so you can uh, choose among these three options which order you want to attempt the exam so again this also depends on your strengths and weaknesses and once you come up with that you will be able to choose the best order that suits you For example, if you want to start with the verbal and the quant section, and you want to uh, attempt the integrated reasoning section and the AWA sections later, you can go with this order. So you can attempt the verbal section first, then the quant, then IR, AWA, or you can also choose to attempt quant section first, or the verbal section, and then these two sections. Finally, accuracy. Accuracy is something that some aspirants ignore. As we all know, there is no negative marking in the exam. and this is why some aspirants uh, are not so concerned about accuracy but remember that accuracy plays a very important role in the gmat exam all the strategies which we mentioned earlier about the time or or having a good strategy during the exam so all these things will not be of much use if you don't have a good accuracy on the exam so if you end up making more silly mistakes your scores will go down remember that gmat is a computer adaptive test which means you'll only get as good as you get and also remember that only the verbal and the quant section so these are computer adaptive the integrated reasoning section is not computer adaptive so these are the computer adaptive sections and you need to be very accurate as well while attempting the questions that's because if you attempt more questions correctly you'll be able to qualify for questions of higher difficulty level and this also has an impact on your score if you are able to qualify to questions of higher difficulty level and if you are able to get them right your scores will also improve drastically and on the other hand if you make silly mistakes and because of that if you get even the easy questions wrong you will not be able to qualify for questions of a higher difficulty level and if you get the easy questions wrong you will be penalized much more for this so if your accuracy is very poor especially in the easy questions then this will badly affect your uh, final score so make sure you have a very good accuracy and again practice is the only thing that you need to do you, you need to practice a lot of sums and also you need to practice a lot of verbal exercises as well you need to take a different variety of topic tests in each of these sections and once you do that and also give more mocks you will be able to improve your accuracy over time so make sure you have a good accuracy while taking the exam so these are the major factors that determine the toughness of the gmat exam if you pay careful attention to these uh, factors that we just discussed the timing accuracy strategy and so on and if you practice accordingly th then cracking gmat is not a very tough job so the gmat is not a very tough exam if you are well prepared and if you have any other doubts regarding the gmat preparation or the tests that we are offering please do mention them in the comment section below we'll try to address as many questions as possible so thank you so much guys and all the best for your preparation